In this video, we're going to be taking a look at writing zeros in the dividend, and you will need to turn your Go Math book to page 227, get out your pencil, and also your math journal. Now, the essential question we are going to be taking a look at is when you when do you write a zero in the dividend to find a quotient? Now, before we take a look at this problem on page 227, Let's take a look at where it says connect at the top of your page and it's right at the top of my screen. It says when, de when decimals are divided, the dividend may not have enough digits for you to complete the, the division. In these cases, you can write zeros to the right of the last digit. Now it is important to understand that whenever we write a zero next to the last digit with a decimal, it does not add any value and it's also important to understand that when you're dividing with decimals you do not have remainders okay so um, those two things are very very important to understand right off from the beginning and why we even need to understand this concept okay now let's take a look at the unlock the problem it says the equivalent fractions are show the equivalent fractions show that writing zeros to the right of a decimal does not change the value okay so if you take a look at if I have 90 and 8 tenths okay that still equals 8 times 10 10 times 10 that's equaling if we were to multiply everything by 10 that is 90 and 80 hundredths okay so 90 and 80 hundredths is still equivalent to 90 and 8 tenths all right now we have the problem during a fundraising event Adrian rode his bicycle 45 and 8 tenths miles in 4 hours. Find his speed in miles per hour by dividing the distance by the time. Once again, very important to understand that whenever we're dividing with decimals, we do not have remainders. Okay, so the first thing we will do is we'll check out the estimated problem. We have 4 as our divisor and the compatible number with that's close to 45 is 44 so we're taking 44 divided by 4 that's our estimated answer which is 11 okay now the step 1 it says write the decimal point in the quotient above the decimal point in the dividend okay so the first thing we'll do we'll just take that decimal point and move it right on up just like that okay and I want you to do that I think it's already in your go math book already now what we're going to do is divide the tens, ones, and tenths. Okay, so t already taken that up there, and I want you to follow along with me. Remember, divide, multiply, subtract, check, bring down. Those are the steps in a division problem. So the first thing that we can see, 4 does go into 4 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. We check that's less than 4, then we bring down our 5. We start the division process again. 4 into 5 goes 1 time. 4 times 1 is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. So my next step is to bring down that 8. Now we have 4 into 18 is going to go 4 times. 4 times 4 is 16. And then 16 minus 8 is 2. Now with decimals, you cannot have a remainder. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to add a zero in my dividend. That does not add any value at all. Okay, and then we'll keep dividing. We'll bring that zero down, as you can see, in step three. All right, so now we have four into 20. That's going to go five times. Five times four is 20. Now we have a remainder of zero. Now since we are at the final number and we have a remainder of zero, that means we are finished. In other words, the final number within my dividend. But say we had a remainder of one, we would have, just have to keep adding zeros until we finally come with a zero as our remainder. Okay, so we have 11 and 45 hundredths as our answer. So we can see, so Adrian's speed was 11 and 45 hundredths miles per hour. So like I said, it's very important to keep adding that those zeros in the dividend until we come to a zero within our remainder. Okay, let's take a look at the connect problem on page 228. And it says at the top, when you divide whole numbers, you can show the amount that is left over by writing a remainder or a fraction. 
By writing zeros in the dividend, you can also show that amount as a decimal. Okay, now let's take a look at this problem in your Go Math book. They do the first couple steps for us already. Okay, 15 into 372 is going to go 24 total times. Okay, now what they have done, they have 72 minus 60 is going to give me 12. Okay, so this is, this is just with a whole number here. Okay, so instead of writing in, instead of writing the remainder or fraction, what we're going to do is just keep adding zeros so we can have a decimal here. So 15 and the 12 cannot go, so that would have been our remainder, but we're going to add a zero to this. Okay, now 15 into 120 is going to go 8 times. 8 times 15 is 120. 120 minus 120 is 0. Okay, so we had a whole number, 372 divided by 15, and what we did here, we just added a 0 because we came up with a remainder. Okay, so instead of saying 24 with the remainder of 12, which, have, which would have been the correct answer, okay, but oftentimes if you're trying to find, you know, miles per hour or, or whatever, you don't want to say 24 miles per hour with the remainder of 12, you would say 24.8 miles per hour, for example. Okay, so we, we have 372 divided by 15 is 24.8. Okay, now let's take a look at that problem, page 228. It says, Sarah has 78 ounces of rice. She puts an equal amount of rice in each of 12 bags. What amount of rice does she put in each bag? So we see our problem is going to be 78 divided by 12. Okay, and so we have 6. 12 goes into 6 in the 78 six times now we have 72 now with a remainder of six now what we are not going to do we are not to answer this problem what amount of rice does she put in each bag we would not say six with a remainder of six okay what we would do we would add a zero put our decimal point add a zero put our decimal point also up in the quotient and we would drop that zero down 12 into 60 is 5 5 times 12 is 60, and now we have the remainder of 0. Okay, so we'd, we would say 6.5 ounces, okay, is the amount of rice she does put in each bag. So I hope you understand why we're adding a 0 on the end of that whole number. Okay, it's because we're not going to say 6 with the remainder of 6, for example. We need to keep working it out until we get that 0 with our remainder. Okay, let's take a look at some more problems on the bottom of page 228. You can see we had 1 and 23 hundredths divided by 6 hundredths. You have to um, make sure with your divisor that it is a whole number by moving that decimal point two places to the right, and therefore you have to move that decimal point two places to the right with your dividend as well. So you can see they pretty much worked everything out, and they had 3 minus 3 is 3 there with the remainder, then they dropped that 0. All right. And they had to drop the 0 because we cannot say 20 with a remainder of 3 whenever we're dividing with decimals. Okay, so we have 6 going into 30. It's going to go 5 times. 5 times 6 is 30 with a remainder of 0 now. So we have 1 and 23 hundredths divided by 6 hundredths is 20 and 5 tenths. Now let's take a look at that next one. We don't... They don't really have anything for us at all, so we're just going to work this problem out 8 into 100. It's, first of all, 10 divided by 8 tenths. So what we did is we took that 8 tenths and we moved it one place to the right. We, we moved that decimal one place to the right, and also we're moving that 100 one place. I'm sorry, that decimal point at the at the right of that 10, one place to the right as well, making that 10 a 100. Okay, so now we will divide. 8 into 1 cannot go. 8 into 10 will go 1 time. 1 times 8 is 8. Now we're going to subtract. 8 or 10 minus 8 is 2. Bring down the 0. 8 into 20 is going to go 2 times. 2 times 8 is 16. 
now we have a remainder of 4. Okay, what we will do now, I'll use a different color of ink, we're going to add a 0, put our decimal point up there, add our 0, bring it down. Now 8 in the 40, it's going to go 5 times. 5 times 8 is 40. And you can see I added that 0 because we were going to have a remainder. Okay, and we cannot have a remainder when we're dividing 10 divided by 8 tenths. Okay, and we added that 0 and now we have a remainder of zero so we can stop if we had a remainder of one we would keep adding zeros until we get a remainder of zero so twelve and five tenths for ten divided by eight tenths now let's take a look at these share and show problems they already have the answer for us we just need to put the decimal point in the correct place okay so we have eight tenths or I should say 5 divided by 8 tenths, what we would have to do, take that decimal point, move it one place to the right, the same with that 5. Okay, we have our decimal point here, we move it one place to the right, drop our 0 in. Okay, so we have our decimal point just like that. And think about 8 into 5 is going, 50 is going to go 6 times, then we have our decimal point to the right there. So we would know that our decimal point would be 6. 0.25. Put it right in between the 6 and the 2. Now I want you to do these next two problems all by yourself. When you're finished, you can press play. I will have the answer for you. So pause the video now. Okay, here are the two answers, 4 and 35 hundredths, and also 1 and 6 tenths. Another thing that you can also do is just, um, you know, estimate as well. That will help you out in placing that decimal point. Okay, I want you to work through these problems all by yourself. You do need to add zeros when necessary. When you're finished, you can press play and I'll have the answers for you. So pause the video now. Okay, here are the two answers, 10 and 5 tenths and 1 and 6 tenths. Now I want you to try these two problems at your seat. When you're finished, you can press play. I will have the answers for you. Remember to add zeros as necessary. Pause the video now. Okay, here are the answers, 2 and 4 tenths and 1 and 45 hundredths. Now, let's take a look at the test prep problem. Work through this problem at your seat. When you're finished, press play. I will have the answer for you. Pause the video now. Okay, the answer is letter B. And wrapping up the video, when do you write a zero in the quotient to divide, write a zero in the dividend to find a quotient? You write a zero in the di dividend when there aren't enough digits in the dividend to complete the division problem. So this concludes the video on writing zeros in the dividend. If you have any questions about this concept, please come and see me.